Now, my offer asked about the incursion because uh, I was at Wilma's at the time doing my um, CAPE exam. I never forget it. And you say, Brrr. no, not CAPE, C sick. And you're like, should we be worried like <laughs> downtown? We weren't we were far from it, but it was still downtown. You could have literally hear the gunshots going off. What what was it like for you? Because was oh that the gosh. first time were you in something like almost like a battle zone? Yes. Yeah. But I I guess I was a bit mentally prepared. Mm. So I was still brand new at CVM. Yeah. So I came to Jamaica 08 and I started CVM January 2010. And the incursion happened. So before CVM was all the fun stuff, yeah. Hype TV, RE. Mm-hmm. And now CVM, I'm doing all kind of stuff. Politics, um, Dodos, um, Manat Phelps and Phillips yeah. covering mm-hmm. all these serious issues, mm-hmm. plus Duppy story and mm-hmm. other things. And I remember the first time that my news editor at the time, Garfield Burford, mm-hmm. said um, he assigned me to a story in Spanish Town on March Pen Road. You know March Pen Road's yeah. reputation, right? Yeah. And when I was about to leave, Burford casually says to me, oh, by the way, pick up a bulletproof vest at the security. And I was like, oh? just, where, where just are you sending me? Like that, yeah. Just oh, embarrassing. Like, yeah, yeah, like an afterthought. Yeah. Like, where Don't are you? Don't get shot. <laughs> where are you sending me? <laughs> Because <laughs> you didn't know, did you know March Pen's um, reputation well, I, before? I knew I was going to cover a murder story. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. I don't remember if I knew the full reputation yeah. of March Pen Road, but mm-hmm. it, I definitely knew after that day. <laughs> <laughs> like bulletproof vest, and then when Tivoli came, they were like, "Okay, so we have to order some more bulletproof vests. We need to order some helmets." And you know, it was serious. Yeah. It got real. So I was somewhat mentally prepared for what was happening. Plus, mm-hmm. there was this whole lead up to it. Tivoli didn't just happen. No, it didn't. We were reporting on this situation for months. The mm-hmm. extradition request from the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, there were reports that Doros was you know, amassing all these, like all these gunmen were coming to Tivoli mm-hmm. so that he could barricade himself inside Tivoli. It turns out he wasn't even in Tivoli. Mm-hmm. He was somewhere else. Remember, they caught him with the wig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Miller. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so all of that happened. And so we already knew something big was gonna go down i remember the day before the incursion began we were i was out reporting i was in new kingston and i stood in a line of traffic just traffic 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 there was an exodus from kingston everybody was leaving kingston because the government had announced that they were going into tivoli and so everybody already know this is war Mm -hmm. and everybody's leaving kingston in in droves Cause they were even cause uh, schools they're like mm, don't really have school but we had and I shouldn't have said CSEC it was Cape I was doing Cape yeah because it was May and the yes, May and the May and they're mm. like should we go like even every parent was like mm, all right guess what we're gonna just go off a tree don't go downtown like we had to find different routes to come and if if you could if you lived in the area like they said all right we make special um special exemption for you. Also, if you live outside of Kingston, you don't want to come, just let us know and you need to just go to other schools. So it was really like that scary, yeah. unsure time for real. And yeah. then the day of that event, when I did that stand up, all day long, people were calling the newsroom mm-hmm. uh, from Tivoli. No, from Tivoli. Oh. So uh-huh. we're getting people calling from Tivoli while Tivoli was being. So what did they call it for? bombed for a lack of a better word so they're calling to tell us their experience yeah. oh. so people are like the soldier they might do this and they might do that and they might drop bomb power they might, and you know mm-hmm. so they're giving us their exp- and all day so i was since i was brand new i was the newbie in the newsroom mm-hmm. i was originally the first part of the day on desk duty so i was answering the phones and taking all these calls mm-hmm. And recording some of the calls for the news as well. And it's so mentally, I knew exactly what was going on yeah. before I went out there. Mm-hmm. And then I also saw get in the car the day before. So <laughs> yeah. I had a, a game plan. Yeah. It was a lot. But in the moment, as a reporter, mm-hmm. this is what we live for. So, so they, you know, hold on, hold on, never, never wasn't there this. anyone else that why they choose you as a newbie? It wasn't just me. We were all out in the yeah. field because it was a lot going on, a lot to cover. So, so well, let me ask you this now. So. When you did a duck for cover from bullets, was did they start past your mind at any point? Say, oh, we're too 
art fair go to the thing. I'm too pretty good for that. Yeah, I'm too good for that. No, as a reporter, you know, mm. you live for these events. Mm. These are once in a lifetime events, and for you to be able to cover them so is a like big a privilege. It was like a mix of being thrilled and scared at the same time. Yeah, so, yeah. there's a little bit of scariness, but there's also, oh my God, this is happening. I'm covering it. Yeah, this is historic. Mm. So yeah. there was that in my mind as well. Do they prepare for like at school? Do they prepare you for something like this? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Uh-uh. It's like, because I mean, even to, when you watch foreign, like, foreign CNN, NBC, and them, they go over like Iraq and them something, and say, really, do school really prepare for things like this? Like, I'm sure they don't tell you no. how to keep cool, how to do no. breathing exercises. In that situation, you're running on adrenaline. Yeah. You're really mm-hmm. running on adrenaline. Because I don't think I really fully understood the magnitude until like afterwards mm-hmm. though when I watched it and reflected back on that time. But in the moment it's pure adrenaline. Wow. So you did ear gun chat? Like, if I did it? yeah, it no, was... find the clip. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, maybe them they just never did a bus. Type in Kalila Reynolds Tivoli Gardens. <laughs> Kalila Enriquez Tivoli Gardens. I don't know why I remember um Simit Smith. <laughs> What's her first name again? I think like I think it was her. I don't know why I'm, I'm mixing that up. Wait, Get in the car? Like under the car. No, that was Marjorie Gordon was uh, on the ground. She was uh, at okay. CVM too. Okay. Um, Get in the car was Nadine McLeod. Uh, yes, yes. Nadine, yes. Yes, 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 I think that stand up is closer to the end. When he's in position and past that, past that, past oh. that. So scroll until you see me on camera in the bulletproof vest. Yeah, I saw that was it. How are you holding your composure at this point? You need to run. I didn't even flinch. But you didn't even flinch. She's like, oh, wait, <laughs> let me finish it. <laughs> you didn't even flinch. Oh, finish the gosh. sentence calmly and take for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's what you was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So then wow. after this, so you're like, um, enough of this, no more fee work for you, or you wanted more? No, we continued. Oh, you did more field? No, like work, field work? work like yeah. this. Yeah. I can't say no more field work. That's the job. <laughs> wow. Okay. 